Can you explain to me just a little bit about smoke inhalation, given that these fires are so far away, um, how similar or dissimilar is this to being near a fire next door or in your home um, and how the particles kind of change in the way that they get inside your lungs? We're being exposed to this particulate matter, the combustion products of a fire that happened very far away, which is different in some ways from being right on top of smoke exposure. The size of the particles that reach long distances are going to generally be smaller uh, than the size of the particles that are you're going to inhale if you're immediately next to a fire. So the smaller particles in many ways are more dangerous. The smaller particles are the ones that can reach deeper in the lungs. They're the ones that uh, potentially in reaching the lungs can be carrying noxious fumes in addition to the particulate matter and the noxious fume uh, byproducts uh, reach deep in the lungs. Some might even be absorbed into the bloodstream. Uh, but the consequences of inhaling this particulate matter are irritation to the bronchial tubes on the way down, uh, but also potentially inflammation in the bronchial tubes or occasionally even uh, in the lung tissue. Who would you recommend stay inside today and, and until this uh, the air quality index is safe? I think the people who are most at risk are people who are known to have underlying heart and lung disease, uh, as well as the elderly and particularly uh, small children or infants. Uh, the individuals with heart disease could be those with uh, underlying heart failure, individuals with lung disease who are most at risk, or those with asthma, emphysema, COPD, or pulmonary fibrosis. And although these are the people that are most vulnerable, uh, even individuals without underlying lung disease or heart disease may respond in a negative way to this inhalation. And I think you've got to monitor yourself. And if you find that when you're outdoors, you're developing symptoms, uh, you've also got to take precautions. The symptoms you want to look for are chest tightness, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath. And if you find that you're having those symptoms, particularly when you're outdoors, when you're exerting yourself, then you've got to cut back and, and be a little bit more careful. Now, the development of symptoms is going to be, again, related to your physiologic reserve, which means your pre-existing lung diseases or other diseases. It's going to be related uh, to your individual responsiveness, uh, and it's going to be related to the magnitude of the pollution that you're exposed to. So even very healthy individuals may get symptomatic uh, if the pollution levels are very, very high. You mentioned the symptoms that healthy people can feel. I felt them last night just walking my dog. Is this something that you think in healthy people can cause issues, or is the smoke inhalation from these wildfires more something that will attack something that already exists? Can you go outside and find yourself with a new problem because of the smoke, or is this more harmful to people who already have an issue? I think it's generally going to be more harmful to people with underlying diseases to begin with. But as I mentioned, even previously healthy individuals may be symptomatic when the exposure levels are very high and there are individual variability in the responses. So there's some people who are just going to be more sensitive and don't know in advance that they're particularly prone to those effects. Again, a lot of this is short term. So I don't think that people who develop these symptoms are necessarily going to be sick chronically, but they may be symptomatic, particularly when they have this higher levels of exposure. And do you recommend if you do have to go outside with or without pre-existing conditions that an N95 or a KN95 is an effective way to combat this publicly? I think it's an effective way of eliminating small particles We've learned that, of course, during the COVID experience. But having said that, not everybody can wear those masks correctly and effectively. And I think if you put it on and don't have a good seal, it's not going to be as protective. And if you do put it on and have a good seal, there are some people who just find it really hard to breathe and to be highly active and exercise when they're wearing a mask. So 
I think you should know that it's there if you need it. Uh, if you don't need it, I don't think you have to put it on specifically just because you're going outdoors. And I think that the people who ought to think about using it are the ones who develop symptoms. And then first response would be get out of the outdoors, get inside, don't do uh, strenuous activities if you can postpone them. But if you have no other alternative, wearing an N95 mask uh, is probably the best way to be safely outdoors and protect yourself maximally with all the caveats uh, about proper use uh, and understanding that it may be harder to breathe through that. And I know that that you're in the the, the treatment business uh, for these types of issues, but I, I had a question. Uh, somebody texted me because they knew I was covering this about whether smoke um, and remnants from a fire is the same as pollution. Um, you know, because I don't really know how to characterize it. Would you say that people are breathing polluted air if we know exactly what it's coming from? How would you characterize it? I think pollution is a very general term and it can refer to so many things, which would include the smoke that we're talking about. But I think, as you said, we know much more about what's in this smoke, although not completely. We know that we have the the combustion products from forest fires, but we don't know all the chemicals uh, that were burned. So to me, the big concern is the combination of small particulate matter and any of the noxious fumes or contaminants that move along with it. So I don't know that I would, I would consider this a form of pollution, uh, but very specific to whatever it was that was burning. We don't know all the effects of inhaling particulate matter, but we generally have the idea that when you've inhaled particulate matter, it can interfere with the lung's ability to get rid of particles as effectively as if you hadn't inhaled it. And some individuals therefore may be prone to being infected with certain organisms that they've inhaled. Uh, they may get bronchitis, they might even occasionally get pneumonia. So I think people have to be alert to the possibility of greater risk of infection uh, when they've had this exposure. And although I think generally we believe this is a short-term exposure, a short-term problem without long-term consequences, there are some experts who think there could be long-term consequences, but I think I would not overemphasize this right now. I'd look at this uh, as a temporary uh, issue and plan on being active and getting back to normal activities as soon as the air quality improves. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it.